guys, it's me Robin, RS Island Crafts. Today we are going to work with some of our smaller pieces of scraps. As we were trimming them and putting them in our little containers for our strips, our one and a half, two, two and a half, three and a half, whatever size we chose from, we also kept all these little pieces that were smaller than the one inch strips. Now a lot of people save these from crumb quilts and I do make crumb quilts with them also and that's another video we'll do later. Today I'm going to show you how I do a ticker tape quilt. Now that's a tongue twister. We're going to take these scraps and we're just going to quilt them right down as in a raw applique to the top of a quilt. Okay, so we have this bucket of scraps. I already went through and I picked out a bunch that we're going to use for the examples today. I'll get this big mess out of the way. This is much more manageable. Depending on the size quilt you're making, I decided that today, as my quilt example, we're just going to make a pillow top. So I went ahead and I took a backing fabric, my batting, and my quilt top. Now you can have a pieced quilt top or you can just have one solid color. I have this fun swirl white fabric that I like to use for things like this. What you want to do is you want to make sure whatever scraps you're using in whatever background, it's going to go ahead and pop off of the colors. So if you're using, let's say you want to use a black background. If you put black fabric on it, you're obviously not going to be able to see it. But if that's the look you want, then hey, it's your quilt. You can do anything you want, right? We don't judge here. So I have all these different... I mostly have, based on my scraps that I had today, is I mostly have rectangles. They're generally all not perfect rectangles, but they're all rectangular. See like this one? This one's a little bit off, but still, it'll fit in with the scheme of what we're doing. I just grabbed a whole bunch of different colors, and that's where, that's, that's, that's my color palette. Scrappy. So, okay, so we have we have our quilt sandwich with the backing, the batting, and the top. I went ahead and I put my pins in it to hold it together. You can also spray baste it. Spray basting would work really well for say like a child size, a baby quilt, or definitely for a pillow top like this. But spray basting bothers my asthma, so we're just gonna go with pins today for me. I'm going to be making a 16 inch finished pillow cover. So I went ahead and I cut my fabric a little bit larger like you normally do with a quilt. And I took my Frixion pen, which disappears with heat, like we discussed before, with an iron. Now it can come back with the cold, but this mark's going to be in the seam, so it's going to be okay. I did mark one inch in on all four sides, just to give me a guideline, because when I'm sewing my pieces down, I don't want them down into the seam allowance. I want them to actually stay within my pillow top. Now, if you were putting on a quilt, you'd be putting your binding along here. Once again, you probably don't want to have that extra bulk of your ticker tape pieces in there. But like I said, it's up to you. Now, if you don't want to do it as an entire quilt, you can just do individual quilt blocks. You could do them quilt as you go, where you would have your top fabric. Just same thing as a sandwich here. You'd have your top fabric, your batting, and your backing or you can just make it as a regular quilt block and then stitch them together. So this is another example. In this one, I went ahead and I used triangles and long strips just to give us a different example of how things are sewn. And these, you could either use a glue stick and glue them down, you can spray baste them with a temporary spray base adhesive, or I'm gonna be crazy and daring and I'm just sticking pins in it and I will probably stab myself somewhere along the way, but that's okay. So let's head over to the sewing machine and see how things are going over there. Okay, can you guys see in there really well? Today we're getting up really close, down and dirty. When we're doing free motion, basically we're going to be doing free motion quilting. You could, there, there's two school of thoughts. You could free motion like we're going to, and we're going to sew just around each piece. Now some people like to stop and cut off their thread and then move to the next piece. And that works really well when you're doing individual quilt blocks. But let's face it, I'm just going to sew around 
and move right down to the next one. What we're going to probably do is we're going to stitch around. We'll probably backtrack so that there's not too much space in between one to the next and we'll go to the next one. I have my free motion quilting foot in which allows us, it has a little open hole in here and allows us to move our fabric around. Now when I purchased my machine I got it at a scratch and dent sale at Walmart and there was a big ding in the box and it seemed like everything was fine until I learned how to free motion quilt. When you free motion quilt you need to drop down your feed dogs because your feed dogs is what pulls the fabric through. These feed dogs if you drop them down it's extremely difficult to get them back up. It took me over a month and a lot of tears thinking I would never be able to quilt again on this machine before I could get them up. So now I don't drop them down. What some people do is they like to put their stitch length down to zero and that stops the feet from moving. Now I just made myself a little cardboard template. It's starting to get a little chewed away in the center so I probably need to add a new one in there. And the feed dogs will just run underneath this and they won't grab on my fabric. I just take some blue painters tape and tape it down. I've been doing this for years and it works really well for me. You know what they say, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? Now I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be screaming, oh no, you can't do that. But like I said, it works for me. I have quilted a king size quilt on the machine like this. I will, like I said, I do need to, um, I probably will need to, to get a new one because this one's many years old and I can see my feed dogs through it. I'm going to go ahead and drop my stitch, stitch length down to zero. And then we'll go ahead and do a little stitching. When I do free motion, I have these Fonz and Porter's gloves. They have these little, these little white bumpy rubber bumpies on it. It allows me to hold the fabric and move it through the machine easier. If I just try to grab it with my hands, the fabric, the quilt will slide all around everywhere and it makes it very difficult. All right, so we're just gonna pick a spot. I'm gonna pull my bobbin thread, thread up so that it doesn't get knotted into the back of my quilt. And it's real simple. We're just going to go ahead and follow the outline of the shape. Turn your block if you need to to make it easier. It's a little hard to keep my fingers out of the way and show you how to go around the block. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pair of scissors on the side of my machine where you can't see and I'm going to take all my scraps and keep them over to the right so I can easily just grab what I need and put it onto the quilt. Pick a random spot. You could take each of these pieces and glue them down with a glue stick or pin them down like we did on the individual block or you can just randomly put them on. Since it's just a pillow, I'm just going to go ahead and randomly pop them on. I'm going to bring my bobbin thread up. And then we're just going to stitch around the square. I'm going to try to go a little bit straight. I'm using a gray thread, a light, a medium gray thread, so that'll go with all the pieces I have. You could use black or you could use white, or if you're doing an all purple project, just use purple. Now, because I started here, I'm going to put my next piece down here. It probably would have been smarter to start in this corner, but it's okay. I'm just going to follow this seam down. And this is going to quilt my quilt as I add these pieces. Just pop my next fabric in and stitch around that. OK, 
Okay, now since I didn't... One of the things we could do is we can also use the iron-on fusible to fuse these down. Or a lightweight, very, very, I would use a very, very lightweight fusible. Because as I'm stitching this, I don't know if you can see, I'm going to get a pucker over here. Now for me, I'm not worried about that pucker because as I come over here, I'm going to have to come back down across it anyways, and it's going to cover it up. But if you want to easily place all your pieces down, get a lightweight fusible interfacing, put it onto the back of your fabric, use spray basting, which would also work, or a glue stick. I'm okay with this because as it gets washed, all these edges are going to fray, and you're not going to see that there's a little pucker there. Now my next piece is going to go here, so I'm going to remove this pin and pick out my next piece. Now I can choose if I want to keep going up and down or I can just go ahead and put this one in sideways. See, now this one didn't pucker at all because I held it a little bit nicer and paid a little bit more attention to what I was doing. As you get going, maybe practice on a pillow top first. Find your rhythm, figure out what works and what doesn't work for you, and then maybe move your way up to a quilt. I'm going to go ahead and finish stitching these all on and then we'll come back and we'll I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, for this block, I tried just free motion quilting around the the triangle, the piece, but I found it was hard to control the fabric. So for this one, I switched back to most my regular foot and we are going to just sew like a regular applique and sew these pieces down. I went ahead and I have my needle all the way over to the left. My machine allows me to have it to the left or to the middle or actually to change it wherever I want. So I went ahead and moved it over to the left so as I'm sewing along the edge, I can line up the line in the center of my foot. Let me show you. My foot See these lines right here on my foot? I'm going to go ahead and line the edge of my fabric up to that and my needle will be over here in the corner. It'll just be easier to get the seam allowance will be the same all the way around if I follow that policy there. Once again I'm sticking with my medium gray to light gray thread because it's going to match my background. When I leave my piece and come across the background, you won't notice it. If I chose a black thread, you would see every time I went from piece to piece. When this piece gets washed, the edges are going to fray and you're really not going to see what thread you used here on these blocks. So if you use a neutral, base it off your background, it won't be noticeable. Stab myself with a pin and then just go ahead and stitch. Once again, if you want everything to be in an exact spot and you don't want it to move while you're stitching, either use a lightweight fusible spray adhesive or a glue stick to hold it down. Since this is going to be a scrappy project and I don't know what I'm going to actually do with this piece, it's probably just going to go into the, the bin of miscellaneous items. I'm just going to go ahead and go crazy and not have it glued down or anything. If you have a, a, a little, 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 little. if you have a walking foot, now would be a good time to use it because once again, without a walking foot, you're gonna end up with the possibility of having puckers. If that bothers you, go ahead and use a walking foot or make sure that everything is glued down or with the fusible. I know with this piece, since I'm going back over the line, it'll be fine. Plus, when the edges fray, you won't notice a pucker. But I know not everyone is as wild and crazy as I am when they're sewing. And people, if it bothers you, it's okay. Do whatever makes you happy. I just went ahead to get about to the, to the point of the next piece. I will go ahead and remove my pin because we don't want to sew over them. 
and just go ahead and sew through the background to get to the next piece. No different than when we did it when it was a full quilt. I'm going to go ahead and keep putting these triangles down and then we'll meet when we do the center. Okay, now I'm just going to go and outline these long pieces. It's really no different than the triangles, it's just a long straight line. See, easy peasy, let me finish this up and then I will meet you over at the ironing and cutting table. Okay, ready for the big reveal? Dun, da, da, da. Here we go, my ticker tape pillow top. All the pieces, I went ahead and ironed it so some of the edges got ironed over. But what I'll do is I will wash this after I turn it into a pillow top, I will go ahead and wash this and some of these edges will start to fray. As I said earlier, it'll be like a rag quilt. The edges will fray a little. If you don't want them to fray, then you can go ahead and do a zigzag stick stitch, a satin stitch, or you can do a buttonhole stitch around these. Or if you use a more heavier weight fusible, it'll stop the edges from fraying. But the point of this one is really to let it fray. As I was stitching this, I noticed that I had stitched it around like this. Let me pop up a picture and show you. So it came out really cool. It looked like a frame. You can put an applique in here or some embroidery or just take, you know, one large piece of fabric and let your ticker tape fray have a and then your ticker tape will be a frame around it. So did anyone figure out why it's called a ticker tape quilt? When you go to a parade and it's a ticker tape parade and all those little pieces of confetti come down that they're throwing from the windows and stuff, they're small like this and they just land wherever they land ticker tape quilt and this is what the quilt thing on the back because we quilted it as we laid them down because we had our whole quilt sandwich now I could have used a white thread instead of the gray so it matched the background better but I had gray in my machine and I didn't want to wind any new bobbins for the white and this light gray is fine it's not going to be that noticeable and then when we did just a quilt block, you see how it got just, it's a little bit wrinkly here, but it's okay because once it gets washed, once again, it's not going to be noticeable. The edges will fray and you're not going to see it. And anywhere that I did get a little tuck, you see that little itty bitty tuck there? I went back over it again to get back to the bottom to get to the next piece and it covered up that tuck anyway so it's it's not a problem this is not a precise quilt this is not an heirloom quilt this is just something fun put it in a tote bag a wall hanging use it for placemats if you use novelty fabrics like I do you can have a skull here and a skull down here and it could be an I spy matching game or just a regular I spy we got Winnie the Pooh coca-cola a skull there's another skull this was a ruler fabric, some Hawaiian, some hearts. I tried, let's see, did I duplicate any fabrics? I think I did okay. I don't think I duplicated anything. It is a little green heavy and a little purple heavy, but that's okay. I think they all work together. When I did this, I came back through here. You can kind of see my spiral. There's a little bit extra space here. I could have put another piece in or maybe brought those two down. But once again, this is going to be wrapped around a pillow. People are going to be leaning on it. Kids are going to throw it on the floor and sit on it. It's it's not going to it's not going to matter. This is this is a fun project. We want to have fun when we're quilting. There's a time and place for precision when you want to have your stars and everything, your points perfect. This is a time when after we've stressed out on those projects, we can just go ahead and have some fun. If you use a fabric line, one of your favorite fabrics you can use the entire line on here or you can just use all of one fabric you can have all red or all of this fabric you can have Christmas Halloween your choices are really endless it's whatever your imagination will allow you to have 
Here's the back of this. You're not going to see any of this because it's going to be inside your quilt or your project. So did I cover everything? I'm sure I'm missing something. Go ahead and ask questions down below. And if necessary, I'll answer anything that's down below. And if I need to, I will do another project for you guys. Because I'm sure somewhere in the future we're going to be doing another ticker tape. Ticker? Boy, that's a hard one to say. In the future, I'm sure I will be doing plenty of ticker tape projects so we can do this all over again. All right, you guys have fun sewing with your scraps. Bye.